So, um, what I'm going to say is not my preaching yet. <laughs> but, um, you see, when we gather like this, I'm just sharing with you my contemplation of the week. The Spirit of the Lord was ministering to me heavily about, about something. I'm writing about it. I haven't finished yet. But let me just give you a taste of it. When the word, when whenever creation happens, you see in the Bible, you see two elements. Always you will see two elements. The word of God and then the spirit of God. They always come together for creation to happen. Genesis 1 from verse 1 it says in the beginning was what? And at that time it was chaos from the uh, the Hebrew word tohua, tohua bohum, meaning chaos in that chaos something was there the spirit of the Lord was hovering around over the deep water. And then something happened. What happened? And God said. And immediately God said. The word came out. And come or came into intimacy with the spirit of God. And then what God said was created. Because the Bible said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Hallelujah. Same thing happened in Ezekiel 37. The valley of the dry bones. Ezekiel said, and I was taken in the spirit of the Lord into the valley. And after the instruction of God, Ezekiel said, and then I prophesied, just as I was commanded, meaning I gave out the word. And that word that I gave out came again in intimacy with the spirit in which I was taken. And what happened? Dry bones recover life. They came together. And at the end, he said, they became a great army. Amen. My point saying this is this. Whenever we come into atmospheres like this and the word of God is coming out, please, you better be open and receive it. Yes, because every time that the word is coming out in, in such atmosphere where the spirit of the Lord is already here, mm -hmm. what happens is that when the word comes out, creation happen. Yeah. The realities of the kingdom are, cre are being created, are being manifested yeah. on this earth. Yeah. Remember, Jesus, while asking or teaching the apostle how to pray, he said, let your will be done as he was in heaven. in heaven. So, when we gather like this, and the spirit of the Lord is here, and the word of God is coming out, mm. creation is happening. Yeah. God is creating things. Hallelujah. God is bringing realities of the realm of the yeah, spirit right. to yeah. the earth Hallelujah. for his will to be fulfilled. Right. The word is coming out. The spirit is already here. Yeah. When they come together, creation happens. Keep that in mind. Always. 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 Amen. 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 My second chart to you this morning. Do you know, do you have any idea why God always uses man when he wants to do something on earth? Why can he come down? He is almighty, isn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. He is. Why can he just decide to do things by himself? Do you have any, any idea about that? The earth is the kingdom 
of man. The earth is for man. And God himself has placed rules. He will not intervene on earth. Mind you, we don't give permission to God to work on earth. No permission. No. God is God. He has created this and he can do whatever he wants to do without permission. But the rule he himself placed is that I will not do anything here without using those whom I give dominion. You see, that's why he always uses men. Keep this in mind. All blessing, all of them, they come from God. But through men, yeah. to men. Yeah. Don't forget that. All blessings, your prayer points, what you were asking God in the hidden place, God will give it. He will provide it. But he will use a man. Always. Angels. Even if angels bring it, angels will go for a man. For you to have it. Why am I saying this? Please don't trivialize relationships. Because here is the domain of man. Don't destroy relationships because of pride, because of lack of submission, because of all sufficiency. Don't trivialize relationship. You never know. That's you right. never know that your destiny helper That's right. is either right or is beside you. That's right. You never know. Yeah. Don't trivialize relationship. Right. Because if God will bless you, he will use men to bless you. If you agree with me, say amen. 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 Now, can I preach? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those two things I just talked about uh, were just contemplations on my mind throughout amen. the week. I was just eager to start sharing. Um, my preaching is actually an exhortation. Just encouragement to remind us of things that we are already doing. Amen? After the fasting. That's the title of my message. Amen. After, who fasted the three <laughs> last weeks? How was it? How was it? Interesting. It was wonderful. It was interesting. <laughs> it was hard. Yes. Be honest. Yes. Was it easy? No. Uh -huh. It wasn't. It was good though. So, I'm going to conclude my message before even starting it. After fasting, let's get to work. That's my message. That's right. If you forget about everything that I will be saying right now, at least keep that word or this sentence in mind. After you fast and you pray, go to work. That's it. I'm not saying go to work, work American work, but work in the house. Amen. Amen. We are going to use the example of our pattern man, Jesus. He also fasted many times in the Bible. What did he do after fasting and praying? Because one thing I noticed in the life of us Christian or human beings is, like, is that when we fast and pray, our tendency is lean most of the time through, uh, throughout or towards resting a little bit. I've, I've tried there in the spirit I'm fasting, I didn't eat. Let me, like, let me eat like a revenge mission. Mm. Let, me, <laughs> let me eat a little bit. I, I pray, I pray, let me rest a little bit. This will be the greatest mistake of your life. Wow. 
if you fast and pray, and then you rest, you are killing yourself because what you lay aside or what the Spirit of the Lord has taken out of you while you were praying, they will come back and they will see you resting and they will attack you again. So, what do we do after fasting and praying? Let's read Luke chapter 4 from verse 14 to 15. Luke chapter 4 14 to 15. Can you help me with you, please? Luke 4 14 to 15. What has Jesus done after he fasted and prayed? If you are a child of God, can you read with me? One, two. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. 14 to 15. He was teaching in the synagogues and everyone praised him. Have you distinguished two things over there? First, Jesus didn't stay in the wilderness. Okay, for those who don't know about the story that precedes uh, those verses, Jesus went into a 40 days, 40 nights fasting and prayer, led by the Spirit. And he was there, praying, fasting. And when he came out, the Bible testified about his state when he went out. He came out not empty. He came out not slumbering. But he came out filled with what? The Spirit. And I'm like tempted to ask you the question. When you finished that fasting last week, how did you come out of it? Very hungry? Very weak? Very, how did you, did you come out of that fasting? Jesus didn't say here that look at me, I'm out of the fasting and I'm filled with the Spirit. No, people can see that that man something happened to him. Yeah, he he has something on him. We can feel something when we come near him. How did you get out your fasting? And the second element that, that, was, that is very important is that when he returned in the power of the Spirit, he went into the synagogues. You see, two things. Filled with the Spirit. And then, he started working. This guy, it wasn't even a, a dying fasting. It was a very seriously dry fasting. No water, no food. Not for 21 days, for 40 days. <laughs> I won't tell you what the just said. She said, it's your next one. So, you see that, and at that time, Jesus was fully a human being. Like, he was feeling the same thing. He felt thirst. He felt hunger, just as we can feel it when we fast and pray. But he can press on till 40 days. And when he came out, the Spirit was testifying about him to people. And in King James Version, or New King James Version, we'll see that the, uh, the Bible says everybody was testifying about him. Why? Because he was different. He preached differently. Miracles followed him. Signs were following him. Simply because 
he was filled with the spirit after fasting. And he didn't stay in the wilderness. And he didn't rest. He went to work right away. Hallelujah. The period after fasting is a very sensitive period. Because the devil will be staying here and looking at us. I'm going to see what this guy, was, this lady will do after fasting. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. You see, the fasting of prayer, a prayer period is like a boot camp. When you come together and the Lord um, recycle, or let, 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 me, let me put it this way. When you are praying and you are fasting, your spirit is open. Your heart becomes a fertile ground that receives the word and produces fruit. You see, so when your spirit is open, ready to receive, and receiving the word that has been shared in during the, the time of fasting, all of those things that uh, uh, prophets or ministers were saying at that time, these are seeds yeah. that your spirit was receiving without even know, you knowing. But let me tell you also something. At that very moment, there is another farmer. That was also so mm -hmm. ah, That one we don't know. Mm -hmm. There is another farmer also ready to send seed, and he was sending it out. Let me explain. I had a friend of mine, very, very, very long time ago, uh, when I was young. I mean, when I was younger, I'm still young. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, I mean. He told me something that I've never forgotten. He said, he was fasting and praying. And at that very time, Providence, he received the visits of a lady. Let me put it this way, of a sister. <laughs> while, he, hey, while he was fasting and praying, he told me. And he said, this is how he had his first one. Mm. Uh -oh. Wow. Meaning, while he was praying, he received the visit of the lady, of the sister. <laughs> what happened in between? <laughs> At the end of the day, nine months after his fasting, he had a child <laughs> from that sister. <laughs> they were not fiancé. And even if they were not married. So, what I'm saying practically is this. Who visited you during your fasting? Yeah. Oh, let, let, let me put it this way. Mm. What visited you while you were praying and fasting? That's right. Let me tell you what visited me while I was fasting. Because I fasted too. Even not to brag, not to brag. My, I'm finishing it today. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's not to brag. It's not to brag. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I shouldn't be saying it. Let me tell you what visited me during my fasting. First, when I was fasting, I had this feeling, this great desire to go watch a movie. Mm. A movie that had nothing to do with the topic of our fasting. I'm, I'm, I'm talking seriously. A, a, a movie that had nothing to do with our fasting and prayer topic. It wasn't even a spiritual movie. It wasn't a Christian movie. Go watch a movie like uh, for those who love movies, MI6, CIA movie, uh, spy, uh, technology. Because I'm in IT. Okay, you are an IT guy. Go and watch movie. You see? And it was at that moment that the Spirit of the Lord sat, uh, started teaching me what I'm saying now. You see, at that time, go see a movie was actually um, a way, an alibi that Satan is looking for 
to you so that you can sow the seed that he wants to send to you. Because when your spirit is open while fasting, you go watch a movie and Satan will be okay, you are on my territory. Your spirit is already open. Let me send things to you. Let me send things to you. And he'll be sending it, sending it, sending it. And those seeds are like viruses. They, you, won't, you, 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 you won't feel anything at the moment. Yeah. But when after the fasting, you say, let me rest a little bit, the devil will activate it. And you will come, you, you, you will start seeing some strange behaviors. And you say, I just finished fasting. Why am I behaving like that? Wow. Somebody saw something in your spirit. Yeah. Another thing visited me when I was fasting. You see, I have a colleague at work. A very close colleague. We, we work at the same place. And the guy, let me, let, let me say it, uh, he is not a bad man. No, but because of the way he was brought up, he was, he, he was a man of the street and even an ex convict So his language is something different. And I'm telling you, there is no sentence, man of God, there is no sentence that will come out of his mouth without cursing. <laughs> I mean, literally everything he's going to say, he has to curse. <laughs> For those who don't say curse, go move. Yeah. Hmm? Don't, don't think I'm going to say one of them. I'm going to say one of them. I'm going to say one So, now, my point is, imagine someone who is fasting and praying, and my spirit is open, and I want to be focused and think about things of God. And he let him talk. And he will come to me. This, mm, this, mm. and do, do you know? Do we, do we even know how he calls me? Oh no. <laughs> I, I, I keep saying. What's the first one? Hey. Hey. You see? You see? You see? M F word.
In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we fasted and we prayed. What next? I said before, let's get to work. Ha! There are some steps we're going to talk about and then we're going to pray. After fasting and praying, the first thing we have to do as a church and individually is to keep the fire burning. Please, keep it in mind. Keep the fire burning. What fire? The fire of prayer. The fire has to continue burning on the prayer altar. And the fire of the study of the word of God. Leviticus 6.13 Say something. Leviticus 6.13 Major, help me, please. Leviticus 6.13 Can you read with me? It says what? The fire, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Come on. Uh, can you read again? The fire, I can't hear you. The fire, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. This is a direct instruction from God Himself. Hallelujah. Have you fasted? Have you prayed? This is what the Master is saying. Son, daughter, please keep that fire burning. Don't let it vanish. Don't let it faint. What fire? You have to continue praying. Apostle Paul said, I forget about everything in the past. And I press. I press on. For what? The crown ahead of me. Hallelujah. We have to continue pressing. Going forward. Breaking the glass ceiling upon our heads. And reach new dimensions in the spirit. Because we have a lot to know. God is to be known. Is still to be known. He still have dimensions that we have not discovered. Remember, I will show you new things. I will show you new things. So let's continue in the prayer. The prayer altar, the fire of it has to continue burning. So do not be tired. Do not rest. Do you know that because of this instruction, God has killed two people? Who? He has killed the children of Aaron because they have forgotten to keep the fire burning. And you know what happened to them? The fire quenched and they went into uh, uh, the people of Israel one tent to take another fire to come and put it there. God knew. God saw it. And God struck them. Because the instruction was even you don't bring a strange fire on the altar. Yeah. Because the fire that the Lord, the Lord was talking about was, was the fire that the Lord himself has put there. Yeah. So, he just told them, just keep that fire. My fire. Keep it. Don't bring another one. Don't bring a strange fire that I will put there. And he killed those two boys because of the negligence. So if God can go to that extent in the Old Testament to preserve his instruction, he is very serious about it till today. Sister, brother, keep your fire burning. If you read Luke 18, I like, I like the, the King James Version, verse, the very first, first verse, Jesus himself spoke and said, uh, the Bible said, he spake a parable to the end that all men always pray. You see that? And he's made the parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Always. Always.
ways to pray. As long as you are a man, you have to pray. Man here means human being. As long as you are a human being, man, you gotta pray. You gotta pray. There is no record in the Bible that the word of God pray. I haven't seen it yet. Brother, have you seen it yet? I haven't seen it yet. The way the word of God became a man, he prayed. Yeah. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, he's still praying up there. Yeah. Romans 8, 34, the Bible says that he is at the right hand of the Father in the city. For who? For us. Men, all men are to pray always. 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 And also, the fire of the study of the word has to continue. Yeah. We don't have the right to rest as far as the study of the word is concerned. No right at all. Because as I was saying in the beginning, we need the word and the spirit to manifest the realities of the kingdom. So by the praying, we are gaining stamina spiritually. And while we continue reading the word, they come together. And what God said happened in our life. Hallelujah. So as God told Joshua in Joshua 1 8, this word shall not depart from your mouth. It shall not depart from your mouth. You have to meditate it. Not day only, not night only. Day and night. And it's not sufficient to meditate on it. You have to practice everything that is written on it. And this will be what? Your key to success. Hallelujah. Because you, your way will be prosperous and you shall have good success. If you are following me, say amen. Amen. So let's keep the fire burning. First step, the fire of prayer and the fire of the study of the Bible. Second thing that we always have to do. As we are praying, as we as we, we are told to get to work, to do what? That's when our vision for this year comes in action. Okay, we are working yes. to go where? Because if we don't have a vision, if we don't have a goal, we can think about the strategies to make the goal happen. Okay? A church doesn't grow by chance. No. No. It takes work. The very work that the Lord is telling us to do. Because we fasted and prayed. But how do we work for our church, for example, to grow vision? Look at this. Uh, do the minister give you the 2023 visions already? Mm -hmm. They have to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the leaders of this church. <laughs> Ministers, I got you. Oh, you are good. You are fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a thing to do. Amen. Now, Prophetess knows your plan for your department, what you are in charge of. Now, she can go to God with it and say, that's what you inspire your people to, to bring to me. I'm praying about it. Give them strategy and give them the provision. And you will see, the church will grow rapidly. Hallelujah. Because if we are visionless, we are going nowhere. Yeah. Though we are working. So, after giving the fire burning, let's get practical. Where is God leading us this year? What is the word of this year? Okay, God, you say this year will be this, this, and that. How are we reaching this goal? How are we going to do it in such a way that at the end of 2023, we can say, Ebenezer, this is where God has brought us. Hallelujah. Amen. The vision has to be clear. The vision has to be precise. The strategies have to be determined for the will of God to happen. Amen. Amen. And, and one, also, one 
the step also that uh, I, wanted, I wanted to share with you. When you read Acts chapter 2, what time is it? That will be my last step. I have one here, but. Um, <laughs> Acts chapter 2. When you read it, you will see that the apostles received the Spirit. And when they received the Spirit, the, the consequence of the Spirit that they received right away was the preaching of Peter. And when Peter preached, the Bible said that about 3,000 people gave their life to Christ on that day, and the church grew on that day, or grew on that day. And when the Spirit of the Lord was talking, talking to me about that very passage, he said something that broke me now. And I look at myself, ah, what's wrong with me? Christian of the universe said to me. He said, I'm just repeating what he, he said in my spirit. He said, look, you have the same spirit. And you are preaching the same word that Peter preached on that day. So why are your churches empty? <laughs> and I was like, hey, but that's, that's true. Isn't it the same spirit? The same Holy Spirit that came on that day? Or oh, am I mistaken? Yeah. Is it not the same spirit? And are we not preaching the same word? It's not a message we hear and okay, God will do it. No, no, no. It's something that can happen now. If by June, as a church, we still have empty chairs, we failed. We failed in our duty for discipleship. We failed in our duty to bring souls to Jesus. We failed in our communication with the Spirit. We failed in the study of the Word of God. Because when we pray and we receive the Spirit, and we, we study the Word, something has to be 
seen. We, we need to see the result of our fighting and praying. Because if we don't, what's the point fasting? Your responsibility is to guide us 
in all the truth. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Show us what we need to know, Lord. He used the provisions of the kingdom that are available to us to bring souls to you. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray.